Welcome back to another episode of DIY Golf Car Garage. Today we're working on our 2003 EasyGo TXT. We're placing the motor in it. We're taking our 36 volt stock motor out and putting in a multi voltage motor called the Beast. This particular motor will run on both 36 and 48 volts. And 36 volts will be pushing about 8 horsepower, right around 1600 RPMs, and get you up to about 15 miles per hour. On the 48 volt, we'll be pushing about 11.4, 11.5 horsepower, 2800 RPMs, with a top speed of 18 miles an hour. But we've got to remember, this is a torque motor. We're not after speed, we're after torque. So, got the motor, we've got the car, let's get started. So, we're gonna get this motor changed out. We're gonna go with a little bit of an upgraded motor. Well, first thing we wanna do, safety first. Make sure I got my glasses on. 9 16 wrench. Let's take one of these cables out between the batteries so that we don't do any arcing on the motor. Next, we have four wires going to the motor. A1 and A2 stands for armature. Okay, then we got the S1 and S2. Those wires are going to our field currents, which is the cables that are on the inside outer edge of the motor. What we want to do is use a half inch wrench and go ahead and disconnect these. These particular cables here do have a marking on them telling them where they go. If yours do not, what I would recommend is either taking a picture of exactly how they're wired back or get you some masking tape, wrap around each one and write on it A2, A1, S1, or S2. So let's get these things taken apart. Okay, now that we've got our cables undone, we've got our 7 16 inch socket, ratchet. Let's take the mounting bolts out. There will be three one on the back side, front side, and one right on top that holds this grouping of cables. Okay, we've got the motor loose. I do have an advantage here today because we don't have a rear body on this car. If you're working on your car and your rear body is still on this, the easiest way to get this motor out and access to it is by the driver's side. What we'd want to do is jack the car up, take the driver's side rear tire off while it's up in the air. Let's go ahead and we will loosen and remove the rear shock. That gives you direct access so you can unbolt it, loosen everything, and put it right out the side. Okay, we've got everything off the motor. Now it's time to actually take it off. Now the way this thing is mounted on now is you've got the armature that has splines slid on to the input shaft this inside of the transaxle. So what we'll have to do is slide it off. Now, keep in mind, this motor is pretty dang heavy. So be prepared, once you get it off that spline, it's gonna drop. Gravity will take over. So, be prepared, it is heavy. Okay, we got this one off. It is a mess. Let's get the new and get it cleaned up and get it in here. Okay, we've got our old motor off here. But now we need to do a little bit of prepping to the new motor and to the transaxle before we get everything started going back together. First, on the old motor, on the outer edge of the mounting surface here, it's extremely rusted. That means the surface of the transaxle must be corroded too. So what we want to do is go to the transaxle, get you some uh, either some steel wool, some scotch guard, or even some light sandpaper and just clean off that surface. We don't want to do any gouging or anything. We just want to get a good, even flat surface. Next, take your rag, WD-40, uh, brake cleaner, carburetor cleaner, anything like that, and just spray over the general area, clean it up, and get all the extra debris off. Because that motor was there, and all the brush sediment is all over the place. We want to try to get it clean and get it prepped for a brand new motor. 
Okay, for our motor that we just took off, if you get you a small screwdriver and look down inside the armature and pry up, you'll find this little bushing in there. This little bushing saves a lot of noise. It's a noise suppressor for the, where the input shaft meets the armature. So what you wanna do is get you just a little bit of grease, just some standard Molly grease, Lightly coat this and lightly coat the inside splines of the new motor. We don't want to get it over greased inside there because if you do, you'll actually create an air pocket when you're pushing all this back together. And then every time you push in on the motor, it'll push right back out on you. Okay, it just seats right back down in the splines. I've already cleaned off the transaxle. We've pre-greased the uh, inner input shaft, well, the outer input shaft, and the inner portion of the armature. Now we're going to take this motor and put it on the transaxle. So let's get this thing in this car. Now that we've got it actually on the input shaft, then we're going to use the bolts that we're holding the old one on, put it for the new one. Okay, one little tech tip here. When you're tightening in these bolts, make sure that you watch the outer rim where the motor meets the transaxle. Do not come over here and tighten one all the way down and then go to the next one. Tighten each one a little bit and bounce around from the other, from side to side. This will ensure that the motor fits flush up against the transaxle. Let me finish tightening up here. Okay, now that we've got this motor on, everything's tight, it's flush. Now let's put the drive cables back on. Remove the brand new nuts that came with it. Okay, as I mentioned earlier, my cables are already marked which ones go where. Hopefully you marked yours or your cables are marked. That way we can just go right ahead and put them all right back on. Now, as with these, when you're tightening these up, do not over tighten. If you over tighten this outer nut, you can actually make the inner nut here turn. Once that turns, you can break a connection on the inside. You've just pretty much ruined your motor. You'll have to pull it back out and find your electrical shop. That's not covered under warranty. Okay, we've now got the motor tight. We've got the cables tight. We're ready to put our battery cable back on and give it a try. I hope you found today's episode on changing out this motor from stock to the beast helpful. If there's any other parts you'd like to see us change out or upgrade, be sure to let us know in the comment section and don't forget to subscribe. Once again, thank you for visiting us here at DIY Golf Car Garage.